Hello, welcome to the Monday, May 6, 2019 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. On Friday, a large number of reports surfaced stating that Git repositories were deleted and replaced with a ransom note. And this did not just affect GitHub, which uh, some news outlets reported, but it did affect various uh, Git platforms. Also, Bitbucket apparently was also affected by this particular ransom note. Now, first of all, if you are affected by this particular ransom note, if you are seeing this note in your Git repository that all your content is gone, it looks like very likely your content is actually still there and available and you should be able to recover it. The link to the register article that I'll post with the show notes has some hints on how to get your data back. Of course, if you do have a local checked out copy of the content, then definitely you should be in pretty good shape. The real question at this point is how did it happen? And the most likely explanation I've seen so far is that some of these repositories had websites that exposed the .git directory. Make absolutely sure that .git is not exposed on any of your websites. It, it does sometimes contain credentials for your Git repository and definitely will include the URL of it so an attacker could use this in order to launch attacks against your Git repository. So while this attack is scary right now, it's actually not the worst thing that could have happened and probably a good sort of warning shot that you probably should protect your Git repositories better. In February, I talked about how the crypto ransomware did attack various network accessible storage devices made by D-Link. Now, D-Link back in February did release some updates for the DNS 320 and 327 devices, but only last week released an update for the DNS 325, which is also affected by this particular vulnerability. The problem with DNS 325 was that this device was actually no longer being sold. So it was one of those out of warranty style devices. But this particular exploit was still used as recently as last week in order to encrypt or destroy content on devices. So I guess D-Link eventually got around to releasing a patch. I'll link in the show notes to the D-Link advisory. Now, the advisory that D-Link published still states February in the date of release, but they added these additional devices. So if you are using a D-Link network storage device, double check that yours is up to date. And the NCC crew published a blog post with two big vulnerabilities that they found in more than a hundred different Jenkins plugin. Jenkins is a platform that allows you to automate your DevOps tool chain. So it is quite powerful and probably shouldn't be exposed to the internet in the first place. The two big vulnerabilities here are the first one stores credentials in clear text. The second one is good old cross-site request forging, which of course could be exploited even if your Jenkins is not exposed to the public internet just by tricking developers into then executing these commands for the attacker. Jenkins, like many other platforms that we have seen in the past, suffers from this problem that a lot of the plugins that users do install in addition to the core product are actually then causing these security issues. That of course is a fairly difficult problem to manage. So make sure first of all that your plugins are up to date and you probably do want to do a quick security check for these two vulnerabilities in your plugins. And the Web Proxy Auto Discovery Protocol or WPAT is one of those protocols that attackers really like because it allows them to sort of get a man in the middle position, but often it's exploited sort of more on local networks. 
Hosts supporting WPAD will look up the hostname WPAD as they start up in order to download proxy parameters. Now, if they can't find a hostname WPAD, then they may actually look for a hostname WPAD and append domains within their search list. Polish security company Red Team now discovered that within many country level domains, like for example .pl for Poland, there are domains called WPAD. So for example, WPAD.pl. And of course, if your search list does include your country level domain, you may end up on that particular site to download your proxy parameters. A number of these domains were then registered to a single IP address 144761844 and this IP address well delivered in a malicious WPAD file. According to Red Team, the apparent goal of this particular attack was to alter referrer headers in order to then earn money using affiliate programs. Your best protection here is to disable WPAD and that way you wouldn't pick up any malicious proxy settings. Of course, TLS should also alert you if you're connecting to a site via a proxy. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.